The Green Book was an essential guide for black travelers during segregation, and it's the subject of a new exhibition at the Illinois Holocaust Museum. Joining us today is Noah Crookshank from the museum. Thanks so much for being here, Noah. Thanks so much for having me. So tell us a little bit about the origin of the Green Book and the history behind it, because there was a similar book for Jewish travelers as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. So Victor Hugo Green was a former postal worker. He lived in Harlem. Uh, his wife was from the South, so he would often drive her down. Uh, and this was a, the era of Jim Crow. This is an era of sundown town, so it was not necessarily safe for, uh, to drive while black while moving across the country. Uh, he was aware of similar guides that existed for Jewish folks, especially as they were going uh, across what's known as the Borscht Belt. And he thought to himself, why doesn't my community have that? Uh, so there have been a number of guides for uh, driving while black during this period, but Victor Hugo Green's Green Book was by far the most successful. Uh, started in New York, branched out to the entirety of the United States, and eventually actually was an international guide until the end of its publication in the late 60s. How did he go about gathering information about what to put in the book? Well, it's, it's fascinating. So he started from his own experience. So it began in New York City, and he personally would go. I started, he lived in Harlem. Uh, he would go to these places of business and uh, you know, ensure that they were welcoming for black folks, and then he'd have that in the book. And he actually would also advertise in the book and say, hey, if you are, if you would need to be posted in here, let us know. Eventually, as the book expanded and expanded, he wasn't able to visit all over the country, so he ended up relying on postal workers, both um, the white postal union, unions work, postal workers union and the black postal workers union to get the word out to share the book, but then also collect information for places that people could go. Hmm. So tell us a little bit more about the exhibition because there's a, an interactive component to it as well, right? Absolutely. So uh, because the book uh, ended up reflecting uh, the entirety of the country, but then also the entirety of experience, uh, there's a lot going on inside. So you get to learn about, you know, areas like here in Chicago, Bronzeville, which is, you know, was known as the Black Metropolis, had an incredible amount of places for uh, people to visit. And not only, you know, uh, travel and safety, and it's an important part of the Green Book, but also so to uh, experience life and joy and resilience. So this isn't just, uh, the book isn't just, uh, you know, um, a guide uh, for protection, but it's also uh, emblematic of, um, of the incredible culture that was going on in the time period. So the exhibition reflects all of that. We have pictures from around the country. We have pieces from restaurants and hotels. We actually have the original Sutherland sign. The Sutherland Hotel was in Bronzeville. It's a place where people like Miles Davis would come in to play. Um, and so we have the original sign there. The wow. building still exists, but it's no longer a hotel. It's no longer a music venue, but you get to see that piece of history when you come into visit. And then you see the contemporary images of what it looks like now, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. What do you think in the year of 2023 is the important takeaway for anyone who is learning about the Green Book for the first time? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, you know, given uh, our you know our museum and our background, um, we're really excited to be able to kind of bring this story to folks who may may not necessarily know about it. Uh, and it's really important to kind of know about how. Um, you know, the resiliency and the joy that was going on in black culture during that time to know that we are still dealing with some of the same, you know, same instances um, of, uh, of you know, the need for justice, for uh, the need for safety. Uh, it was called dr driving while black back then. We, you know, we call it traveling while black now, or driving while black now. Um, we're still struggling with some of the same issues, but there are ways that folks came together uh, and provided opportunities for themselves not only to be safe, but to, to be together and thrive and create culture uh, and enjoy each other's company. And also, also drawing connections between how anti-Semitism works and racism. Absolutely. So one of the important parts about our museum is that we're not really just focused on the history of the Holocaust. We absolutely do that, but one of the things that we've been really trying over the last decade or so is to bring in other stories of resilience, other stories of social change, social justice, of uh, progress moving forward. And this is such a wonderful story of, you know, what Victor Hugo Green started but ended up becoming a phenomenon across the United States. And it's one that we were really uh, inspired to share uh, as another example of of again resilience and um, and perseverance in the face of r racial segregation, r racial hatred, racial violence. Um, it was important to tell this story of, of success. Noah, thank you so much for coming in this morning. The Green Book exhibition is running now through April 23rd at the Illinois Holocaust Museum in Skokie. And for more information, you can visit their website, IllinoisHolocaustMuseum.org. Also check them out.
on social media. Still 